snow on the ground in the middle of summer? Actually, you'll be surprised when I tell you that these are thousands of wild daisies. If you have never had the joy of painting outdoors before, then you are in for a treat because not only am I going to show you step-by-step step how to paint some of these wild daisies, but I will also talk about the ins and outs, the pros and cons of painting outside. This was all on a little vacation I took up the Colorado mountains. Luckily, I brought along my portable easel and watercolor paints and was able to climb the hill right behind my Airbnb and draw and paint some daisies right on site. So let's get to painting, and if you feel so inclined, you're welcome to take your paints outside and paint outdoors too. Now, I've always got my portable easel stocked with supplies so I can just grab it and go. And in here, I have my favorite portable tin paint set by Mei Liang. Very good paints for a very good price. I highly recommend these as a grab and go paint set. I have a small container of water, which sometimes I'll even collect from a nearby stream if I need to. And then I always pack artist tape if I'm painting outdoors because it seems like the wind is always blowing when I paint outside and it often blows my paper right off the easel. So when I tape this down, it's just one less thing to worry about. Now I did draw a quick sketch of the daisies before I came outside, so I won't be showing the drawing portion today, but if you'd like to paint along with me, I have a free outline available for download for two days only, or it is also available for purchase on my Etsy shop. Both of those links are available in the description of this video if you're interested. Now let me pull out my little bag of brushes and let's see what we've got in here. Unfortunately, these brushes aren't my best ones. I really kind of need to replace them with some better ones. I basically have just packed any extras or older brushes that I don't use much anymore, but let's try some of these out and see if they'll work. I think I'll pick out some smaller sizes, maybe a size two or three round. Then of course I've got my paper towel that I'm going to stick a little ways under my water glass to keep it from blowing away. And then I'm going to do some quick color swatches to pick out the colors that I want to use today. I'll start with a few yellows and oranges for the center of the daisies. Now when you're painting something white like a daisy, then there are a couple of ways to do this with watercolors. Either you can paint the background around the white area so that the white will show and stand out, or you can pick an accent color to use on the white area for the edges or for the shadows to help emphasize the appearance of something white. So for today, I think I'll try a blue color for a shadow and accent emphasis on the white petals. I'm kind of liking this dark navy blue color. It's very much a shadow looking color without having to use black or gray. Now I'm gonna start by painting the centers of the daisies with a little water and then some light yellow paint on the upper half and a touch of orange or darker yellow paint on the bottom half. Okay, right away I'm noticing that one of my cons in my outdoor painting today is that because I sat in the sun, the shadow of my hand is very much in the way. I didn't notice this until after the fact because it wasn't bothering me as I painted, but as a recording for you as a viewer, it is sort of a problem. So I apologize for that. Next time I record outside, I'll try to do it in the shade instead and hopefully that won't cause a visual problem next time. All right, I'm just gonna finish off the centers of these really quick and then we'll move on to the petals. Here in the upper left corner of the screen, I'm gonna post a picture of some of the daisies that are sitting right here in front of me that I am using as a reference today. Okay, now let's get some of this dark navy blue on our tray, and I'm gonna add some extra water to it here to keep the color lighter in value. I don't want it to be too dark or overpowering. After all, we do want this to give the appearance of a white flower in the end. The trick here, and hopefully my shadow is not gonna be too much in the way, is to put on enough color near the edges so that it can differentiate and make noticeable the petal from the white paper, but also not so much color that now the petal is blue looking instead of white. So what I'm doing here is painting a small, thin line of color along the bottom edge of the petal. Then I wet my brush and use the water to lighten and spread the paint out just a little bit, yet still keeping some areas with 
have either little or no paint at all so that it does have some white spaces. Basically, I'm using this color on the bottom edge and spreading it to the middle, then I'm leaving the majority of the upper part of the petal white. In this way, we're creating shadow and definition using the paint color, but because we're leaving a good portion of the petal white still, it will hopefully give the illusion of a white flower. All right, while we work on that, let me tell you a few pros and cons to painting outside or on site. Now, first, let me say that to paint outside doesn't mean that you have to paint what you see in front of you. You don't have to paint the flowers or the mountain or the trees that's in front of you. Although that can be fun, if it is overwhelming to you and you don't feel comfortable with that, just start by painting something simple, something you know, something you drew previously. Just enjoy the time outside and paint whatever you feel comfortable doing. However, with that being said, one of the benefits of painting what's in front of you on site is the fact that our eyes can take in and see things that sometimes photo references can't. Have you ever heard the phrase, oh, these pictures just don't do it justice? Well, that's because our eyes can take in so much more than a simple photograph. We see things in their full and true color. Our eyes show us depth and peripheral vision, where when it's printed out, a 3D object now is transformed into a 2D object, and the colors are often just not the same vibrance. So painting what we actually see can sometimes enhance our depth and color choices in a painting. Now, besides that, there is something relaxing, peaceful, and even romantic about painting outside. You use all of your senses when you're doing this. Maybe you feel the wind in your hair, or you hear the leaves rustling in the breeze. Maybe there are birds chirping nearby, or butterflies flaring past. Not to mention the pure joy and peace that comes from just being in and a part of nature. I find it to be almost a stress reliever to sit in such a setting and let my creative senses go. But of course, along with these things as positives, they can also bring on some challenges. There has been times when my watercolor paper or my paper towel has blown away. Maybe it's too hot or too cold of a day to be outside. Maybe there are too many bugs buzzing around. I'm sure you've seen them buzzing around me today. Um, in fact, there has actually been times where a bug has landed or gotten stuck on my paper or in my paints, so I guess it's not always peaches and cream. Something else to be aware of when painting outside, which can be a negative or a positive, it all depends on what you're painting, is just the fact that your water, your paints, the painting, etc., all dries out faster when you're outside. So if you're trying to do a lot of color blending, bleeding, or blooms, it can be tricky. You have to work pretty fast. Or you pick something like I'm doing today where I paint one little section at a time so it doesn't affect the process as much. In fact, with this particular painting, the faster drying is making it easier for me because then I'm not having to wait a long time for sections to dry before I can paint right next to it. I'm moving pretty quickly and I'm not having to skip around as much. Anyway, I guess the only way to know if you like painting outdoors or not is to try it for yourself. I'd love to hear about your experiences with this if you have done it before. But I guess I'll stop talking for a minute now and let's just enjoy the painting process while we listen to the birds and bugs as we finish off these petals. All right, let's test out some of these green colors and see if there's one that's gonna work for the stems. Hmm. Well, I think I'm gonna use a blend of some of these greens and maybe even add in a touch of brown to make it a little more natural looking. 
Then when I have my green ready, I'm gonna start painting the stalks using a darker green nearer to the top of the flower and then fade it out a little as I move downward. Now, I didn't originally draw any leaves on these daisies, but I kind of feel like I need a few. So I'm just gonna take a look at the flowers that are around me and freehand a few leaves on these stems using the same green color. And that's it for my on-site daisy painting. I hope you had some fun and enjoyed either painting along with me or just watching this tutorial. And I hope that someday you'll give painting outside a try, even if it's just in your own backyard. If you did enjoy this tutorial, I hope you'll consider subscribing to my channel so I can continue to help you discover your artistic side.